These are the Sunday recommendations for my free email list for April the 24th, 2022. This week's blog post is the second in my series on the James Museum of Western and Wildlife Art in St. Petersburg. It includes bronzes on the second floor. Do you need me to tell you again that sculptures need to be seen in person? I do my best with the photos, but it is not the same. Related to the James Museum post, especially that sculpture by Fremont that's in the upper left, a poem by Henry Lawson, How the Land Was Won, 1899. Lawson was an Australian, and maybe you have to know something of the history of Australia to appreciate this poem, but see what you can do. The future was dark, and the past was dead, as they gazed on the sea once more, but a nation was born when the immigrants said goodbye as they stepped ashore. In their loneliness they were parted thus because of the work to do, a wild, wide land to be won for us by hearts and hands so few. The darkest land neath the blue sky's dome and the widest waste on earth, the strangest scenes and the least like home in the land of our father's birth. The loneliest land in the wide world then, and away on the furthest seas, a land most barren of life for men, and they won it by twos and threes. With God or dog to watch, they slept by the campfire's ghastly glow, where the scrubs were dark as the blacks that crept with nulla and spear held low. Death was hidden amongst the trees, and bare on the glaring sand, they fought and perished by twos and threes, and that's how they won the land. It was two that failed by the dry creek bed, whilst one reeled on alone, the dust of Australia's greatest dead with the dust of the desert blown, gaunt cheekbones cracking the parchment skin that scorched in the blazing sun, black lips that broke in a ghastly grin, and that's how the land was won. Starvation and toil on the tracks they went, and death by the lonely way, the childbirth under the tilt or tent, the childbirth under the dray, the childbirth out in the desolate hut with half-wild gin for nurse, that's how the first were born to bear the brunt of the first man's curse. They toiled and they fought through the shame of it, through wilderness, flood, and drought. They worked in the struggles of early days, their son's salvation out. The white girl wife in the hut alone, the men on the boundless run, the misery suffered, unvoiced, unknown, and that's how the land was won. No armchair rest for the old folk then, but ruined by blight and drought, they blazed the tracks to the camps again, and the big scrubs further out. The worn haft, wet with a father's sweat, gripped hard by the eldest son, the boy's back formed to the hump of toil, and that's how the land was won. And beyond the up-country, beyond the outback, and the rainless belt they ride, the currency lad and the ne'er-do-well, and the black sheep side by side, in wheeling horizons of endless haze, that disk through the great northwest, they ride forever by twos and threes, and that's how they win the rest. Third recommendation. Henry Kitchell Webster, Mrs. Thornborough's Apology, also known as June Madness, a play from 1912. This drama is one of my favorite works by Webster. It appeared in print for the very first time in my collected short works of Henry Kitchell Webster, Volume 1. I'm attaching a PDF. If you enjoy it, the print version has a number of letters by and to Webster about this play, which make interesting reading. The fourth recommendation this week is commentary and a translation of another famous opera aria. DianeDranteWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say well done Diane or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDranteWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.